the first and most important thing is that you mustn't just wait and hope that your child will outgrow the problems because, as we've already said, that's most unlikely. You need to act early. But, of course, that's going to be a problem for many because it's so difficult to um, diagnose, pick up the problems. So it is a bit contradictory, but hopefully people will be doing these sorts of things anyway with their child and more so if they're having some sorts of difficulties. And I've got a list here of some of the sorts of things that are, are really important to help with, with that, particularly the writing later. But to start with, it's very helpful to build up the child's perceptual and their spatial skills. And this is best done by means of games in a fun context, of course, um, such as jigsaws, block building, mazes. But and inset board type jigsaws of the even earlier years. But you also need to know that, I'm sure you've, if you've got a child who has difficulties visuospatially or um, with fine motor skills, they don't always like to do some of these tasks. I know my son didn't, and it was a terrible job to get him to go anywhere near a jigsaw of any sort. One thing I can say at... Um, with certainty is please don't say to your child, as my husband um, did to ours, don't you know that inside pieces of a jigsaw don't go with straight edged pieces by now? And can't you see that that colour is not the same as the colour you've just put it next to? I'm afraid he did that. However, <laughs> At least don't do that because it puts them off doing these tasks and you have absolutely no hope of training them on some of the sorts of skills that could be helpful. Even if they can't get all the way there, um, it is still helpful to do that. Um, that comment about the colour brings me to something I perhaps missed off on here and that is how difficult it is for some of these children to match. Um, so that's another set of games you might like to do. And it helps them for later work, then they have to scan back into the uh, reading comprehension or written comprehension as well. Develop fine motor skills by drawing, painting, colouring, dot to dot. Again, it's really important to try to do all these things, but it, doesn't always work, unfortunately. Um, I have to confess to a terrible moment where, um, behind my back, my husband coloured, did all the colouring in of my son's stuff. <laughs> and when we got a sort of raised eyebrow from the teacher, I thought, my goodness, I, I, I'm going to have to confess. I can't be the psychologist and pretend I'm trying to train him on all these skills and actually my husband's doing it for him. So I confessed, and it, is, it has remained a family joke, but I told the teacher. <laughs> anyway, so you just have to try all these things and, and, and not labour it. I mean, fortunately, my son at 18 doesn't have to do any more colouring in ever again, <laughs> thankfully. But there's an awful lot of it. And then he couldn't hold the, the ruler straight to if you try and train the skills and say hold the ruler to the edge and so it doesn't go over the edge, you have to know how to hold the ruler flat and not. So you have to break down all these skills into very small sections and try and make it fun, try and have rewards. Don't, don't sound too desperate that when they can't do it and just keep on being un unable to do it. Okay. Teach the right pencil grip. Now that's really important because if that's you get this wrong from the beginning and there are all kinds of pencil grips and I'm sure Jane will be able to describe hundreds of sorts that she's seen and <coughs> the difficulties of changing what people are doing. Um, Val, you can demonstrate what I'm thinking, can you? The, the right pencil grip? And it's slightly different for left-handers as, as, as well. Um, boards can be helpful to 
because you want to get the body position and everything right. I mean, it's really, it's like learning a musical instrument. If you learn the piece with the wrong notes in the first place, well, that's how you're going to play it later. So we really do need to get this basic things done from the very beginning. Practice writing the letters, um, again in the right way, knowing where to start the letters. Um, it's the same sort of thing, getting it. What you can do is to make it fun. Children can use the letters to, as it were, make an autograph, or even if it's only just a single letter, but so that they're getting lots of practice, but without it being an exercise, a chore, work. It's, it's fun. Um, making a freeze, anything you like to just um, increase the frequency in which they're doing it. By all means, of course, in the earliest years, use glitter or sand or something to trace so that they're getting the movements correct before you actually um, use the uh, uh, pencil. But all these things will help. Okay, moving on to the later years, often even more practice is needed. I mean, children do have to be able to write, isn't it? Even in t today, when computers are used a lot more, they still have to, even in their GCSEs, um, do some amount of handwritten work. So uh, these skills do need to be taught. They do need to be try and get their writing legible and they do need to try and be able to build up the speed so it doesn't take forever and they're always behind. Um, it's quite useful to use an exercise book and have um, one page per letter <coughs> that they practice keeping the pencil to the paper from one end of the line to the other. They don't have to fill a whole page before moving on to a, a, a another letter, of course not, but perhaps a couple of lines of one and then a couple of lines of another. And it's useful to build in rewards and make that into a, a, a game as well if you have any hope of su succeeding with that. Definitely the touch typing and keyboard skills. Really, really essential and best taught as early as, as possible and there are fun programs for that and so that they can use that for their homework later on of course for um, coursework, exams um, and it really for those who have dyspraxia lifts them out of the terrible curse of never being able to get their things down on paper, never being able to read what they've said so they can't check, they can't organise their thoughts and the whole thing is a complete jumble. Um, if there are, oh, and another thing with the typing is that of course you can, it helps with the organisation because you've got the information there um, on the computer and it's not in the form of crumpled up pieces of paper in the bottom of the school bag or floor or somewhere else. The spatial problems that are so common, as I mentioned earlier, um, for children who have dyspraxia do give rise to specific difficulties in a number of, of, of subjects as, as listed there. So maths, um, I mean especially fractions and geometry, but it can be really cause a lot of problems for children who just put it lining things up in columns. Um, so all these things need extra, extra <coughs> teaching, extra reinforcement. Don't let them think they're bad at maths when they're actually just can't see how things relate to each other. Um, <coughs> I remember uh, again with my, my son, he had to um, it was a mass thing. He had to put, I think, a, draw a triangle inside a hexagon or something like that. <coughs> there was absolutely no way he could relate. He, he couldn't produce one figure inside another, and there were sort of bits of figures, one on this side of the page and one on the other. He knew what they were, but he absolutely couldn't relate 
the one to the other. And he went away thinking he couldn't do any of the maths, whereas in fact he was quite good at maths. DT is, a, an, is another one that causes great problems. Where the, uh, design technology, where you have to um, often make, I think there are various kinds that you can do, but designing and making objects, um, and they all have to do, to a certain extent, art or DT, and you know, it's the, which is worse for these poor kids. Some, and uh, I had a lovely clock that came home that was an entire term's work. My son, aged 14, and he proudly put it on the sideboard. It was just enough time to notice that the sort of turquoise plastic, the several bits didn't quite match, the colours didn't match up. He'd selected pizzas that he hadn't noticed didn't go together. And within two minutes, there was a pin in the entire lot fell apart on the other sides of the room, just had to go into the bin. I mean, it was just hopeless. Geography, maps cause a real headache. And again, you know, geography is a compulsory subject for quite a, um, a long period of time. And, and, and so extra help to make sure that, that, that your child isn't struggling. You may have to keep going back to the teacher again and again because they really don't quite understand why the child might be having problems. There's still far too great a tendency to think they're just being careless or lazy or awkward, and really they, they aren't at all. So, science is another one. Diagrams, terrible rulers shapes. Practical things you can do is to help with, um, in the middle years, is also teaching note-taking and filing skills, because they are going to need those throughout. And I'm going to talk a bit more about organisation um, and in relation to homework in a little bit, but it is incredibly difficult for them. Um, to do that. So putting transparent folders, for example, for to put loose papers in so that they can do it quickly, have special time of the week or even the day to make sure that this is done, <coughs> things are transferred instantly, um, use of headings, bullet points, so on for note taking all skills that actually have to be taught, practiced, reinforced with these children again and again. 